It's important to underline that the need of leadership firstly originates from the team and its developing efforts, not from a mere individual need of guidance. We could point out that the stronger the need of leadership is among members, the more the team is vital and prosperous, as it means the members are longing for growth and tight cooperation. Leadership could be therefore defined as the outcome of the team's expectations, of the roles assigned and of the leadership capabilities of those individuals contributing to adequate expectations. There are multiple leadership roles and different members could, at the same time, be carrying out activities aimed at leading and developing the team. There are so many different functions associated to the leadership in accordance with the expectations of the working group. Leadership is a fundamental ingredient to achieve high performance, a good working environment, and effective communication among members and take decisions within the whole team. If the leading roles are taken up by competent persons with defined and precious roles and tasks, then the team will work properly. Otherwise, it will have to face many hurdles. What we will be dealing with in this chapter on leadership is what sociologists call service leadership, a leadership theory and a set of practices which contemplates a sharing of power among the leader and the team members. So instead of an exercise of power by one at the top of the pyramid, the servant leader puts the needs of the team members first and helps them develop and perform as highly as possible. The result is a global vision in which leader and team are seen as one single entity from a relational perspective. In this respect, the team produces its own leadership style and its own leader, or better, its own leaders, and this is achieved through a regular negotiation of roles and capacities. Service leadership aims at negotiating a clear role which stimulates each member's capabilities, each member's relevance, and the sharing of success and risks. This implies that there are no more ambiguities related to who's achieved a specific result. The leader works closely with the team and not on or for the team. This leader doesn't take the team's place, but rather develops the resources within the team, both in operative terms as well as in relational terms. He eventually makes work easier and fluid. The following are the characteristics of a service leadership. 1. It must be situational. It must be coherent with the team's objectives, with its members' professional and personal characteristics, and with the team's history and culture. A situational leadership is always addressed to professional growth of each individual, as well as towards the development of a bigger capacity in taking responsibilities. 2. It must be transparent. A transparent leadership means that roles must be clearly established during the setup phase, so that everything is negotiated according to the capabilities of each member. The leader will guarantee the correct evaluation of results rather than of people within the team. Evaluation is a tricky issue in a team, as it calls upon members' skills, knowledge, image, and identity. The team activity pushes towards evaluation and self-evaluation and has a positive outcomes when it's product-oriented. This is what transparency of leadership eventually brings to. 3. It must be flexible. A successful leadership is addressed to coordinating capabilities and contributions by the team members. It needs to accept and adopt decisions, working methods and solutions put forward by the team and with the whole team rather than sticking to leaders' standard ideas. This characteristic must be supported by negotiation skills, which allow the adoption of the other's members' points of view, as well as the assessment of strengths within members' proposals and choices. All this based on a mutual exchange of knowledge and ideas. 4. It must be pragmatic. A successful leadership must be firmly based on facts and data coming from the reality and the surrounding environment. Decoding this data is a fundamental part of teamwork as it contributes to taking decisions, the risks to be faced and the finding of available resources to reach the objective. 
This characteristic highlights the fact that the team's point of view is only just one of the many views and that any solution put forth is the right and convenient one on a certain moment. Pragmatism is always addressed to the best and feasible solution. 5. It must be goal-oriented, also called task-oriented. Goal-oriented or task-oriented leadership is a behavioral approach in which the leader focuses on the tasks that need to be performed in order to meet certain goals or to achieve a certain performance standard. Goal-oriented leadership involves setting clear and specific goals based on established experience that the no can be achieved. A goal-oriented leader is grounded in knowledge and a realistic outlook, being aware of the context in which the organization operates, the traditions on which it is based, and the risks being taken. Goal-oriented leadership may involve the whole team into establishing a hierarchy of goals or a sequence of goals acting as steps towards a long-term objective. 6. It must be relationship-focused. This characteristic ensures the acknowledgement of individual needs and of capabilities to develop shared values among team members. It is fundamental here to ensure high-quality interpersonal relationships, which allow a strong identification with the whole team, as well as motivation and responsibility. A relationship-focused leadership doesn't prevent conflicts, but rather manages any kind of clash that may occur within the working group. Relationship-oriented leaders are focused on supporting, motivating and developing the people on the teams and the relationships within. This style of leadership encourages good teamwork and collaboration through fostering positive relationships and good communication. This may involve offering incentives like bonuses, providing mediation to deal with workplace or classroom conflicts, having more casual interactions with team members to learn about their strengths and weaknesses, or creating a non-competitive and transparent work environment, or just leading in an encouraging manner. Relationship-oriented leaders understand that achieving positive productivity requires a positive environment where individuals feel driven. Relationship is the basic condition for the efficiency of a working team.